Hi, I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome to Basildon in Essex in the UK. I'm over here today to drive the Iveco Stralis XP with 570 horsepower. So I'll be taking you on a full exterior tour of this truck. Then we'll hop inside and go down through all the interior features. And then I'll be getting hooked underneath the trailer and taking it out on the road for a test drive. You ready for this? Let's go. Okay, starting off with the exterior here, finished in Chrysler Silver. And it's got the blue accents there above the sun visor on the door and around the front section there and on the front bumper so that looks quite well and we'll also be talking more about the tco2 champion um, on the test drive we'll be learning more about that we have the air conditioning pod up on the roof so yeah let's walk in for a closer look we do have the xenon headlights so there will be good light from them at night and we have the LED daytime running lamps and this section here pops out and it's a washer jet for your headlights so uh, that's quite effective good power from that and over here we have the steps built into the front bumper and in behind these plastic sections we have our tow hooks at either side uh, nice chrome effect there on the front grille and also on the Iveco logo nice so let me just pull the front grille here uh, there, it's not lockable you can just pull it straight open and we have our coolant bottle there we have our washer bottle and you can top up your oil here and we also have a dipstick so nice to see one of them here now there is also an electronic gauge on the dashboard to check your oil level so i think it's great to have uh, both so let's just close that back down and walk around the passenger side so uh, the mirror layout, the mirror the design themselves is actually quite good but they are housed a bit too close to that pillar so there is a bit of a blind spot on the interior but hopefully it's something they have improved on the new SOA coming next year. So we'll see how that design is once, it's, uh, once I get behind the wheel of it eventually. Now what's quite unusual as well is that we have a 65 profile super single tyre on the front axle then we have a 31580 profile on the mid lift and 31580 profile on the rear axle. So yeah, it's uh, quite unusual to see this layout. A low profile at the front and the normal size tire there, 80 profile at the rear. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. And your exhaust after treatment system here, you're not supposed to stand on that because it can get very hot. Uh, it's even warm there just now with the short drive and your catwalk area would be nice if this was covered over as well we have our aluminium air tanks and your full air deflector kit at the rear and the Iveco logo embossed there into the back section and I really like this as well you see this the way it's positioned here for your air look I think that's a great position because most trucks usually have them in behind the front grille but that's a far better location because you connect your air there if you want to top up, top up your tires or do other maintenance uh, you have your little air outlets there proper position for them and you can do a jump start here if you wish your positive kick clicks on there and your negative here uh, we do have air uh, tire pressure monitors as well so they're very good to have and your Alcoa aluminium wheels and nice covers there I like them as well with the Iveco logo built in uh, into those covers but yeah we have our back section there that houses the batteries we have the LED rear lamps and they will flash amber really fast if you brake harshly out on the road just to warn drivers behind that you're uh, braking harshly and yeah the adjustable fifth wheel just pull the handle there and you can use your trailer to move it up and down uh, you'll notice as well you see the air dryer cartridge there look uh, of course Iveco is owned by the C&H uh, Industrial and they're all the companies that they own C&H so huge company you see Case New Holland yeah very handy they're all just labeled on the air cartridge there but uh, yeah we have the um, 430 litre diesel tank and we have a 50 litre add blue tank so uh, we're just gonna hop inside and give you a look at the interior I like these lockers as well there's a good decent size lower locker so uh, yeah you do have remote locking um, that's very good to have and you can also test your headlights 
from the remote so let me just click this button here so it has an electronic opening you probably heard it there just uh, electronically open so these are quite a good size uh, decent enough space in them and if I click here we can open up this bottom section there's a good space in them as well um, they're actually I would say bigger than the Volvo FH so good space in those bottom lockers and your top locker and you've got both lockers are of equal size on both sides of the truck uh, we have three steps leading up into the cab uh, we have a nice soft section here on the door card and nice trim there and we have a big reflector here as well so let's just hop inside and take it for a nice tour a nice spin we have the uh, rear remote there for rising and lowering your back axle uh, the seats there are they're they're also cooled and heated and have full lumbar support so uh, yeah good adjustment in them we have the Iveco logo embossed into the headrest and we have the nice white stitching all around the leather covered seat and also leather covered steering wheel so uh, we're just gonna start it up let me just give it a quick start and let's go through the light test okay there we go and let's give it a couple of revs here okay uh, we can adjust our steering wheel there's a little button on the floor so we can adjust it just by pressing on that little button there and we can push it up out of the way we have all our air conditioning controls down here we have a little section there for storage you can store your coins and cards here and we have a little cup holder there and your handbrake of course and we have a 12 volt socket yeah so uh, quite good space in the XP with a high roof and we have three lockers there just above the windscreen this one is lockable and so is the one on this side so very handy to have those lockable now this middle one you can get a microwave fitted there if you wish so uh, that would be handy and we have storage areas there underneath uh, it's after chiming there <laughs> sometimes it will do that uh, it's probably just the ignition on but uh, yeah I have no idea why the USB video input and auxiliary input are positioned up there uh, that's a quite a weird location uh, would you <laughs> you would imagine it should be down here on the dashboard but the dashboard layout itself is uh, quite good it's all angled in towards the driver so uh, quite easy to use all the controls they're all easy to hand and let me just open up this section here uh, all your fuses are in behind that um, panel there and you can store your documents here but this is quite unusual let me show you this if I lift up this little plastic panel uh, we have our onboard diagnostic system and a 24 volt socket but you see this little ignition key section here if you turn that with a key you can restrict the truck to 85 kilometers so this truck would normally be restricted to 90 kilometers with the turn of a key you can restrict it to 85 so yeah the transport operators might like to know that if they don't want their driver wasting a whole load of fuel <laughs> so uh, nice to know these things but uh, yeah we have nice comfortable passenger seat uh, we have two armrests one at either side that's nice for the passenger that is quite comfortable I lay on it earlier and there is good comfort from that really like that and yeah there is quite good space up here now one thing I have to show you as well is how this bed operates so let me just show you the feature on the bed here you see it tied up at the moment now watch this the way you can adjust the different height settings watch see you can have it at each different height just by those clips and look straight up and it's up and it stays up like this so that's very good and just back down again and we have our little net feature here as well so yeah I really like that look straight up clips in <laughs> how easy is that so just standing up here I'm six foot two so uh, I'm just looking at the headspace here now the air conditioning pod it does rob a bit of headspace you know if you're standing here you do um, touch your head against it if you stand over here 
you've got all this space, but the air conditioning pod does rob you of a bit of headspace. Plenty of space over this section, but uh, yeah, something you might want to think about. Uh, you'll have less headspace if you have the air conditioning pod. So yeah, let me just show you. Now this is quite good as well, look. We have this really big fridge. Um, this is a really good size fridge now. They don't really come much bigger than that in trucks now, so that is very good. Now normally what that would be is a storage area, but you can opt to have the fridge. And this is a cooler box, so let me just pull that out. Look, we have a cooler section here. So uh, normally that would be like um, your fridge and freezer section, but here you can have your separate fridge here. So yeah, I quite like that, that's nice attention to detail and our cup holders there below but uh let me just hop inside to the driver's seat and go down through some of the controls so let me turn back on that screen actually it's chiming there again but uh yeah we have our horn switch actually let me just uh hoot the horn and give you a sound of that so that is your little air horn it's a little coil air horn uh down at the front passenger bumper section and let me turn it back off and we have a separate horn so uh yeah two different horns and we have a little uh spotlight switch there your battery isolator and your uh night heater switch there another lamp switch oh i don't want to turn that on keep it off and our mid lift switches and a cat catwalk light and down here i showed you that uh yeah and the gearbox 12 speed gearbox we have the hill hold function there and we have our cruise control functions your adaptive cruise control which is brilliant we can turn off our reversing buzzer your pto switches your lane departure warning more lamp switches there and your heated windscreen would you believe that this truck has a heated windscreen but uh yeah i'm not sure would it actually pick it up all the little lines on the windscreen is probably too narrow to pick them up but uh yeah it's a heated windscreen now the windscreen itself is a bit narrow so uh hopefully they have improved that on the s way <laughs> we'll see if they have and uh, you have your advanced emergency braking as well but the mirror layout design i really like this wide angle one on top and the bottom one there is pretty good nice the way you can see out there but as i said already look there is a bit of a blind spot here look those mirrors are just housed too close to that pillar and uh yeah a lot of people are not really happy with this little section here on the window as well the way it's divided they would prefer if it was all one size window i'm just going to start it back up so let's turn on the ignition so the layout there nice easy and clear easy enough to read we have the rev counter there we have our engine temperature your fuel gauge your speedometer and let me just zoom into this screen here uh, you can also adjust your night heater there on the screen and go down through different menu functions trip data diagnostic and yeah your uh oh yeah we do have a speed limiter here as well see the sl switch your speed limiter and we have esc and asr uh your anti-slip regulation switch and your electronic stability control program and we have a rocker switch here as well so if you're stuck on rough terrain or slippy roads uh, it will rock you out um, so you can gain more grip and we also have a cab tilt function so you press that switch there and you hop outside and there's two switches up and down uh, beside the cab and it will rise and lower the cab electronically so i really like that as a feature nice and easy to tilt your cab yeah okay i think it's time to get hooked underneath the trailer and hit the road I'm joined by John Britton here in the passenger seat. Uh, John is uh, overseeing the drive and he's going to talk to us all about the TCO2 Champion. So yeah, we're going to put it into D and move off. And the great thing about today's test, guys, is that we are loaded. We are grossing 32.8 ton gross. And uh, we know that for a fact, John, don't we? 
<laughs> because we went on the way bridge at CNH before we left. But John, just driving down here on our short little spin down to this industrial estate, the steering is very light, John. Yeah, I really like that. Incredibly light, good, good steering, and, yeah. a, a, and quieter as well. Not nice, quiet cab. You haven't got a lot of noise there. So and let's just hold. That's the horn. That's that's one of the horns. Yeah. yeah. So John, over in Ireland, I test drove the 510 Stralis, 510 horsepower, and I was actually surprised at the pulling power of that truck. Now, John, I have spoken to a guy in Ireland who dyno tested a 510 horsepower Stralis and he told me that those trucks, that particular truck that he tested was actually developing 150 Newton meters more than the stated figures by Iveco. So <laughs> maybe this 570 horsepower um, Stralis XP, John, has more than 2,500 Newton meters of torque. So I'm just guessing, John. <laughs> it, it might have more than the stated figure, but uh, yeah, I'm just telling you what a guy over in Ireland told me. That was that, interesting. Yeah, well, that dyno test first, trucks. Heard of that one, but uh, yeah, all, all, all interesting to hear comments like that. Obviously, yeah, because uh, it, it makes a difference with the, you know, how we produce yeah. figures and things. But uh, it's news to me. Because on, on the Irish test drive, um, I was fully loaded there as well. Yeah. And, you know, the pulling power is good in these trucks, John. It's very, very good. Um, and, uh, and we have a two-stage engine brake here. Yeah, that's really working well. Yeah, and that is strong as well. Yeah, that comes on very strong. You'll hear it revving a bit high there because it's maximizing the stopping power from the engine. Yeah, saving wear and yeah. tear on the brakes. Oh yeah, absolutely. And John, let's just have a quick chat about the TCO2 Champion. What way does uh, that work with the Ivecos? Well, we talk about total cost of ownership on that one. It's uh, more uh, to do with vehicle, the, the length of time the vehicle's in service and the saving on fuel. They've yeah. made this one particularly uh, efficient with fuel. You've got a saving on fuel and you've also, you've got a saving with the CO2 level, which is obviously important with the uh, environment so uh, yes they've ticked a lot of boxes there made a, a very fuel efficient truck that over the lifetime of the vehicle will save the the operator money and uh, downtime so that's good yeah because Iveco have worked it out on a kind of a pie chart exactly what the cost of ownership is everything down to tires fuel the driver's wages everything yeah, and I think that's been overlooked in the past where they've just looked at the, the, the initial cost of, of a vehicle, whereas this one is based on the service time. So, uh, yeah, definitely worth looking at and uh, studying because, you know, it, it will affect the final. Oh, absolutely. Figure. If yeah. you're a big fleet operator, I mean, every absolutely. cent counts. Yeah, and uh, yeah, if you can claw back anything like that, yeah. then that's good, good for you, the company, good for the for the uh, profits so yes indeed if I'm quite honest now John the front axle could be a bit more comfortable we're not riding on an air ride front suspension so it would be nice if that was a bit more comfortable just over a few bumps there I could feel it uh, but yeah. uh, still still quite nice yeah and now we are passing the headquarters here CNH industrial so there you have it um, yeah, it's a big factory, John. New Holland. Yeah, all combined. Yeah, yeah got the tractor factory there. Been there for yeah. years, and uh, still producing lots of tractors. Uh, plus the Arveco main offices where they operate from as well. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, interesting to pass it. Unfortunately. So maybe when we're back at some stage to do the S way, we can do it from the factory because we. We didn't have permission today, but maybe we'll have permission the next time. Absolutely, yeah, it'd be good to do that, yes. Now yeah. I have the column stock here on the right of the steering wheel. I can knock that down and go from 10th into 9th, or I can knock it up and we can go up a gear. So we have a 12 speed automated gearbox. So John, with these gearboxes, sometimes when you're approaching roundabouts, sometimes it is good just to knock them down to make sure you're in the right gear entering the roundabout. Um, because you know, if you're slowing up to a round when you see a gap, 
you want to make sure you're in the right gear to flow into the roundabout. <laughs> Yeah, uh, again, yeah. good driver can make that work in his, to his yeah. advantage. Yeah, help help uh, again save on the braking and the and the stopping uh, eases the vehicle through. So that's good. Yeah. But look, John, I'm look, I'm powering it on there now, and the pu the pull is there. You know, good. there is good pull from these trucks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You've got plenty of horses there. Yeah. So that's, uh, but uh, yeah, it's always great to test them with with a load. It really gives you an idea pulling power but uh, yeah I really like the engine brake it's a good strong one two-stage one but yeah I'm always using the retarder on the truck that I drive all the time John I'm always using it yeah I think that's a good side of yeah uh, you know, good sign of a good driver using mm -hmm. utilizing that uh, option and yeah. it, it does uh, I actually I actually know of one guy John <laughs> that was so obsessed with saving his brakes, that he achieved nearly 800,000 kilometers on his brake discs from new. Crikey. Would yeah, you believe that's, that? Uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's incredible. That's yeah. savage. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> Isn't it though? <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> It'll yeah, just give you an really idea, is, it, it, yeah, you absolutely. know, the savings that you can make. Yeah. If yeah, you well, are. Uh, look, some of the drivers do yeah. um, go out and uh, just use auxiliary brakes like that and uh, yeah rarely touch their brakes which is good and you also have the high cruise GPS function as well yeah and that gives you uh, on motorways especially it cuts the uh, cuts the revs so that you can uh, yeah. Eco roll basically. So oh yeah, you have the eco, eco roll and, and, roll, yeah, and, and uh, the gear shifting. Yeah, it's all working to help again improve on fuel. Yeah. So it's like the GPS is reading the road ahead, so it knows yeah, you get the gradients and yeah. what gear to be in. Picking up the gradients and uh, utilizing it with the, the weight of the vehicle. It's good. Yeah. So we're just gonna swing right around the roundabout here, and yeah, that wide angle mirror at the the top there, John, is very good. That white good. angle mirror on top. Excellent. Yeah, I like that. I, I think all these improvements yeah, help the, the cyclists and things like that. Yeah. You do, the, you, you know, pedestrians. You need as much mirrors as you can possibly get, so uh, it all adds to uh, a, a better. But they, but they just need to widen the gap between the mirrors there on the left and the pillar, just right, to give uh, visibility in between them. It's, it's all good points. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's uh, let's slow down here a bit now and knock it down into ninth gear. Now we are on a slight gradient here, John. Yep. Now you see, look, <laughs> see that pulling power, John. Yes. Yeah, now good. that is good performance. Yeah, you're definitely feeling it. You there, can't. You? Yeah. you definitely can't knock that performance from no. 2,500 newton meters of torque. Yeah. They've. Uh... I'd love to put this on the dyno, John. <laughs> and double check those figures. Huh? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. It, 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 it is impressive, John. Yeah. Yeah, I've done um, the Scottish route with this particular yeah. unit. And tried yeah, we're laying the departure warning. That's yeah, working. That's kicking in, yeah. <laughs> just to keep yeah. everybody uh, on their toes. Okay, we well, can just get yeah, past it, this it, cyclist. It does the hills very, very well. and. As you yeah. say, comes from driving, so that's good. But yeah, the steering, the steering's very, very light, very nice, and nice thick to hold steering wheel as well. And the seat, you can get great adjustment on that from the lumbar support. But yeah, I quite enjoyed that drive, John. We're just back at uh, C and H Head Q, the headquarters. So I'm just going to swing around that roundabout and make our way inside. I don't think we can show anything on camera, John, though. Absolutely. Not. <laughs> Unfortunately, not today, because we don't have permission, okay? But uh, look at that now. Look, I'm not even using my brakes, John. Look, and we're on a slight downhill section. Look, no brakes, no brakes, no brakes. And now I press my brakes. Excellent, yeah. So, yeah, that's a good, strong engine brake. I like that. Yeah, and we're pulling the Montrecon triaxle trailer. It's got the aluminium wheels at the back, so that will save on our overall gross. And 
Yeah, that was a nice drive now, John. Okay, there we are back from the drive. Let's just hoot the air horn and the small little horn. <laughs> okay, let's knock it off. But uh, yeah, like the power. As I said it on the test drive, it's, it's pulling very well, this truck. 570 horsepower, 2,500 newton meters of torque. So I begin to wonder, do they underestimate the torque figure on this truck? Because it's pulling like a truck that has more torque than that figure would suggest. But yeah, the Stralis XP570, quite a nice truck. Front axle could be a bit more comfortable, but then this isn't on an air ride front suspension. But uh, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see the improvements that they've made with the new S-Way. So hopefully around next April of 2020, they will be getting one in here, in here and I can show you more about the factory here and CNH Industrial. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and I'll chat to you all again next weekend for another video. So until then, take care and thanks for watching. Cheers! He thought I wasn't recording. <laughs> yes. Away from uh, your heads, oh God. <laughs> we will do a day too. And now we've got somebody in a van driving in the background. <laughs> okay, we'll get there eventually.